tell you why. I can't tell you on any of my accounts why I do what I do. At that time, it makes sense. So I do it. Detectives bug you and bug you? Yeah, it was my money. Pam Hupp, the woman immortalized by Renee Zellweger in the limited series The Thing About Pam, has been charged yet again with the murder of her quote-unquote best friend, Betsy Faria. Pam is a killer. There is no doubt about that. Some have suggested that Pam Hupp might even be a serial killer, but to be clear, Hupp has only ever been convicted of one single murder. Pam, who is now 65 years old, is currently serving a life sentence at a women's correctional facility in Missouri for the murder of Louis Gumpenberger, a man that she claimed she'd killed in self-defense after he entered her home with a knife. Pam is now facing new murder charges, this time for the 2011 killing of Betsy Faria, a cancer-stricken mother of two. Now this might feel like deja vu for Pam since she's faced these exact same charges for this exact same killing before. The reason the charges, which were first filed in 2022, are being refiled is just a technical one. In a press release, the prosecutor's office explained that they were seeking to change the venue for the trial, primarily to make it easier on witnesses. The prosecutor said, quote, Many of the witnesses we will call on to testify have been involved in this case for well over a decade. Additionally, Betsy Faria's loved ones have also waited for well over a decade for true justice to be delivered in this matter. If possible, we should seek to make the burden these parties have been forced to shoulder a bit more manageable. So let's dive into the murder of Betsy Faria and the tragic, messy court case that followed, which saw a family ripped apart and an innocent man imprisoned. Betsy Faria and Pam Hupp were colleagues and friends at a State Farm branch in Missouri. Now, since her death, a lot has been made about these two being thick as thieves, the best of friends, but Faria's family has frequently disputed that, insisting they were somewhere kind of between acquaintances and friends. At any rate, in 2011, the two had grown closer after Betsy was diagnosed with terminal cancer. As 2011 came to a close, so it seemed with Betsy's life, her cancer had metastasized to her liver. She was sadly running out of time. But on December 22nd, 2011, Betsy made an odd decision. She suddenly changed the beneficiary of her $150,000 life insurance policy from her husband, Russ Faria, to Pam Hupp, and she didn't tell anyone. Pam and Betsy had gone to the local library to have a librarian serve as a witness to this switch. Five days later, on December 27th, Betsy went and she had her chemo treatment and she visited her mom and the plan was either for Betsy to stay at her mom's for that night or for her husband, Russ, to come pick her up and drive her home. Pam Hupp, however, showed up to Betsy's mom's house unexpectedly and sort of insisted driving her home. Betsy texts Russ to let him know she had a ride and Pam took her ailing friend to her house. Now, this is the last time anyone would see Betsy Faria alive. Now, Pam has said to police that she drove Betsy home around 7 p.m. And we have proof of that. Betsy and Pam called and left Russ Faria a voicemail when they got back, which was around that time. About 20 minutes later, one of Betsy's daughters called her mom but didn't get an answer. Russ Faria was out for the night with four friends watching a movie from about 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Then he grabbed food on his way home, walking in the door at about 9.40. What he found when he got home was gut-wrenching. Betsy was dead and bloody on the floor in front of the couch with a serrated kitchen knife stuck in her neck. He immediately called 911. My name is Russell Faria. Russell, what's going on there? <laughs> I just got home from a friend's house and, and, and my wife, my wife killed herself. She, she, you can clearly hear that Russ did not know what had happened. You heard there that he thought she had taken her own life. Now, this was in part because her wrists were slashed, but slashed down to the bone. In truth, Betsy's manner of death wasn't suicide, it was homicide. She'd been stabbed 55 times. Along with the knife lodged in her neck, a second knife was found under a pillow on the couch. Now, Betsy's time of death was determined to be sometime between 7.20 and 9.40 p.m., but first responders believed that she had been dead for at least an hour when she was discovered. Who's the first person they look at when somebody dies? It's the spouse. That is what Russ Faria told People Magazine in 2022, and that's what police did. Their investigation into Betsy's murder focused in on Russ, and they relied heavily on information given to them by Betsy's friend, Pam Hupp. It was Pam who told investigators that Betsy was afraid that her husband would bleed through her life insurance money, and she wanted Hupp to take control to ensure that her daughters got it. It was thought that Russ may have found out that he was no longer the beneficiary and just snapped. Plus, Russ and Betsy did not have the best marriage. He told people, quote, we had our share of separations and infidelities. But Russ said that that all changed after Betsy's diagnosis, and they were determined to not only make it work, but to give Betsy the best end of life that she could possibly have. The day after Betsy was found dead, police arrested Russ. He was charged with first-degree murder, and things were not looking good for him. One, investigators thought it was 
pretty far-fetched for Russ to have even suggested it might have been suicide considering how brutal the crime scene was. Then there were the marital issues and he failed a polygraph. Much ado was also made about Russ's emotional state. He was either too emotional, like in that 911 call that you heard, or not emotional enough in subsequent police interviews. And then there was Pam. During Russ's trial, it came out that Pam had told police that Russ was a big drinker with a tendency towards violence, and she suggested that they look on Betsy's computer for proof. Lo and behold, there was a Word doc on the laptop which documented Betsy's fear that Russ was going to kill her. But Russ had an alibi, remember? And not just one person to corroborate it, but four. However, prosecutors argued in court that a conspiracy was at work and that the four of them decided to lie to protect Russ. In 2013, Russ Faria was convicted of his wife's murder, his relationship with her daughters, his stepdaughters was absolutely destroyed. He was sentenced to life in prison plus 30 years, but all the while he maintained his innocence. Following his conviction, the St. Louis Post-Dispatch released a bombshell article revealing that Pam Hupp had actually pocketed Betsy's $150,000 insurance payout, never turned it over to her girls. The expose uncovered all sorts of troubling accusations. In addition to the potential financial misconduct, the Post-Dispatch discovered that Pam Hupp's statements to police were reportedly ever-changing. The outlet claimed that Pam had first told cops she never went inside the house with Betsy, but then backpedaled on that. Pam would later give a rambling interview to Chris Hayes at Fox 2, where she'd said she'd been upstairs in Betsy's room when she missed that call from her daughter at 7.21 p.m. Now, these points, along with some others, led Russ's lawyer to successfully appeal his conviction and secure a retrial. The second go around was a bench trial, meaning that it was in front of a judge and not a jury. After three years in prison, Russ Faria was acquitted of his wife's murder. He later sued the county and settled to the tune of $2 million. Now the investigation into Betsy's killing was reopened and eyes were on Pam Hub. As the Post-Dispatch noted, Pam kept the insurance money. She also changed her story about it, first telling police in taped interviews that the money was earmarked for Betsy's daughters, then saying in court documents that Betsy intended for Pam to keep the funds herself. Then there was the changing timeline of where and when Pam was or wasn't inside the house. And most bizarrely, during Faria's retrial, a detective testified that Pam told investigators she and Betsy were lovers. This is something family strongly disputes. Two other pieces of damning evidence against him were explained away as being potential plants by the real killer to frame Russ. Remember that Word document on Betsy's laptop which pointed to her fear of being killed? It was revealed in court to have been written on Word 97, a software that wasn't installed on Betsy's computer. By 2016, the heat was on Pam Hupp. Police were looking into her for Betsy's murder, and Betsy's daughters had sued her over that insurance money, a suit they consequently lost. 2016 was also the year that Hupp fabricated a kidnapping attempt on her life and ended up murdering Louis Gumpenberger, a 33-year-old father with special needs. Hupp told police that the man had been sent to kidnap or kill her in order to get Russ's 150K, insinuating that the now free Russ Faria was behind it. This was easily disproved and Hupp went down for murder. Pam Hupp is also suspected to be involved in the death of her own mother, Shirley Mae Newman, an ailing woman with dementia who died in 2013. The last person to see Shirley alive was Pam, who dropped her mom off at her condo and purportedly told the staff not to expect mom for breakfast. She was found dead the next day from blunt force trauma caused by a fall. Her death was determined to be accidental, but a previous police interview given by Hub in Betsy's murder investigation cast some suspicion. Hub said in a taped interview, I really hate to say it, if I wanted money, my mom's worth half a million that I get when she dies. My mom has dementia and doesn't half the time know who we are. She's been living alone in a condo, and I know that sounds really morbid and stuff like that, but I'm a life insurance person. In 2017, the medical examiner changed Newman's manner of death from accidental to undetermined, but an investigation has not been open and Hub has never been named a suspect. Pam Hub's murder trial for the stabbing death of Betsy Faria is scheduled to take place in the summer of 2021. She has denied any involvement in the killing. Search Daily Mail videos on Facebook for more clips like this. For more true crime content like this, hit like and subscribe.